Welcome. You're listening to The Aligned Self, conversations in creating a conscious and abundant life. This is Daniel DeNovi. I'll be your guide and host. Let's see just where we can take this. Okay. Hello there. In in last episode, I talked about living the extraordinary life, living the epic adventure. And someone messaged me and thought that uh, (laughs) the topic was a little light, which is kind of interesting because it is an epic life. And it does begin with a decision. And they said to me, I get it. I, I want to make the decision, but I don't have any idea on how to have an epic life. And I agree, there isn't anything specifically written about having an epic life yet. But ultimately, it is your decision, it's your choice on what it means to have an epic life. You get to set the parameters, you get to decide what does epic look like to you. Because, you know, my dad was always fond of saying one man's meat is another man's poison. And frankly, my approach may not be anything close to your approach. Now, I am a teacher, and I I will share with you the things that I've discovered for myself in looking at different approaches, different ideas in the arena of personal growth, and my own discoveries in playing with the whole idea of living the epic life and living my life as a laboratory to practice these principles and put them into play, put them into place to see just what happens. And I've made some detours along the way. I've had to take three steps back to move five forward. But I think I've put together a pretty good map. Now, most of these principles, in fact, all these principles are taught, are, are shared inside my signature coaching program, The Aligned Self. But if you're not going to take that, uh, I'm going to share... 22, 23 different distinctions, uh, dimensions in being or having an epic life. Originally, I entitled this the the 13 critical distinctions in living an extraordinary life, but I've added to my list. And I understand that as we move forward, you may be tempted to take notes. I'm going to suggest that you do not take notes, that you just sit back and listen and allow whatever topics, ideas that resonate with you to permeate your consciousness and drift down to the lower regions of your subconscious mind. And then your subconscious can bring these practices, bring these ideas into your life, integrate them in the most amazing way for you. And don't worry, nothing will be lost. You can always come back and listen again. Uh, But, you know, since I'm going to cover 22, 23 different distinctions, there's going to be a lot inside the podcast. It'll probably be two or three episodes. I'll break it up. But even so, I'm only going to be able to gloss over many of the topics, many of the ideas. So to make sure that you have the information available, aside from putting yourself in the Aligned Self uh, Coaching Program, I'm going to break all these down in the future and do a podcast uh, episode on each and every one of these principles, these distinctions. And if you go to yesdaniel.com backslash uh, 21, yes, that's uh, yesdaniel.com backslash 21, uh, numero 21. And there you can download the entire list and there'll be some notes underneath each of the, the sub headings. But uh, obviously, I can't write everything out because it'll be a book, and it will be a book someday soon. Now, as I move forward in the conversation here, uh, I'm going to refer to each of these points as dimensions, because as you add them to your being, add them to your repertoire, your mind, and integrate them into your being, it will add dimension to your life. It will create dimension in your character. So what I consider dimension number one, and probably the most critical, if you only get one out of this whole thing, it's this one. And it's living your life as if you're 100% responsible for everything that shows up. And while this might not necessarily be true, if you adopt the idea 
that you are 100% responsible for everything that shows up, then you will never be a victim. You are always empowered to make a choice. See, the ultimate freedom as a human being is your ability to choose your response. No matter what shows up, you can always choose your response to life. Now, I admit that you may not like the choices that are available to you, but you can always choose your position. You always have a choice. You see, someone could take away your liberty. They can lock you up in chains, lock you in jail, yet you always have your freedom to choose your response. Now, I have no idea where you currently are in life, where you are right this moment, how you feel about the circumstances that have unfolded and where you now find yourself. But understand that being 100% responsible, you can choose a new direction. You can choose to live an extraordinary life. You can choose to live the epic life from this point forward. You can choose your thoughts, your emotions, your response. You can be the cause in your world and not at the mercy of the effects of life. Now, in this dimension of 100% responsibility, there's no excuses. Just do it. There is no try. You either do or do not. And if you do not, you pick yourself back up and you change your approach. Do something different. Because if you're 100% responsible, wherever you are right now, it's because of the choices, decisions, and actions that you've taken up until now. And if you want to go somewhere different, if you want to create something different, it is incumbent upon you to begin making different choices, different ideas. You may have to take a completely different 180 degree approach because if you're currently not getting the results that you want in life, it's because of the decisions that you've made and the actions and the beliefs that are in place and to keep doing things the way you've always done them when you've not been getting the results that you've wanted seems like insanity, does it not? Because if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. Now, also inside this dimension of 100% responsibility is the idea of self-mastery, creating the conditions where your mind, body, and ego serves you, and you are not in the business of serving them. Because in being 100% responsible for your mind, you choose your thoughts, you choose your emotions, and you choose your actions. Now, I understand some of you think and feel that a lot of these beliefs and actions are ingrained in your subconscious mind. Well, if you're aware of it in that moment, if you're aware that these actions and beliefs and thoughts aren't working for you, right then stop and change it. Do something, anything different. Interrupt the pattern. Because that point of awareness, that conscious awareness, that you have a pattern operating at the subconscious level is your opportunity to interrupt it, your opportunity to do something different. Be 100% responsible for your life. Okay, dimension number two, embracing the growth mindset. Now, if you find yourself in this podcast, listening to this topic, listening, having listened to maybe several podcast episodes here, you may already be pretty well entrenched in the growth mindset. And the growth mindset is that no matter where you currently find yourself, no matter, no matter what circumstances are going on in your head, you can learn something new, adopt and improvise and grow, expand your consciousness, expand your awareness and move in a whole new direction. Like you're not defined by this moment as opposed to the fixed mindset. And in the idea of the fixed mindset, there, there's a feeling that you're almost stuck, like there's no possibility that things are the way they are and they're just not going to change. And as you think forward in time, you just see more of the same, more disappointment, more things happening the way they've always happened. In the fixed mindset, you're at the mercy of life. You're at the mercy of other people's decisions, 
and there's not much that you can do about it. You just kind of have to make do with what is going on. Let's say you lose your job. In the fixed mindset, it's like it's over. You might be older in the workforce. You might not have the skill set to go somewhere else. And you just think you have this pervasive feeling of futility as you move forward. As opposed to the growth mindset, you could pick up a new skill, you can move in a whole new direction, you could literally recreate yourself, reinvent yourself. You see, can you feel the difference in that? In the growth mindset, anything is figure outable. Okay. Dimension number three, and I I guess I should say, as I'm moving through these, they're coming up in no particular order aside from number one. And as I move forward in time and put these into a book and a more concise uh, delivery system, I'll probably, I guess, put them in some type of hierarchy from most important, most impactful. And again, you know, you're not me. So what may be impactful for me isn't the most impactful for you. So with that said, I'll just say, do the best you can, and your mileage may vary. Okay, number three is master your mind. Now, this is such a huge topic of mastering your mind, and it's such an essential skill. But it's essentially taking governance over your self-talk, the pictures that you make in your head, the emotions, how they come up, how you own them, you can change them, and I don't know. We'll get to that. You can change your emotions on command. You always want to honor what's there, but you don't have to stay there. But the the master skill in mastering your mind is meditation. And I want you to think of meditation as simply mind training. If you focus on your breathing and as you become very aware of the breath, you may have thoughts that You may have weird thoughts, extraneous thoughts pop in your head. You may have an internal dialogue that comes up and you want to acknowledge it. Oh, there's something there. I'm having a thought. And then you can let it go and then bring your awareness back to your breathing and then focus on your breathing again until you become aware that you're thinking another thought moving somewhere else. And then you acknowledge the thought, acknowledge that you're off course and bring yourself back on your breathing. And you may do that 50 to 100 times during a meditation. But acknowledging that thought and keep bringing it back to your breath or bring, bringing it back to your mantra, then you are practicing mind training. You're learning how to focus your mind on command. And in those days when it seems like you have a very noisy monkey mind and you're constantly bringing your awareness back to your breathing, those are the days that are the most productive in your training because you've interrupted this pattern of the mind chatter a hundred times, 50 times, and kept bringing it back to where you want it to be. And it's interesting how people feel that that those days are not very successful. Like I had a terrible meditation. Well, granted, you didn't end up in that, that space of nirvana where the bliss just overcomes your whole being. But It was very productive in the training exercise of bringing your awareness back to your breathing again and again. And once you do that for a period of time, and it doesn't have to take very long, a week, maybe two weeks, and it doesn't have to be an hour a day, 30 minutes a day. It can be 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes a day in meditation of just that practice of interrupting the mind chatter and bringing your awareness to where you want it to be by design. And that's where you train your mind to be able to focus where you want it to go, when you want it to go. So if you haven't yet done that or put that practice into place, by all means, take it on. You will reap tremendous benefits in your life. So I am breaking this longer podcast up into three bite-sized chunks. So from here, go on to part two to hear the rest of the story. And again, if you want to download a complete list of all the dimensions, go to yesdaniel.com backslash 21. Until then, this is Daniel Dano V suggesting you follow your bliss and live the epic adventure. (laughs) 